Everyone, so today we're going to be working on this four transit and we're going to be replacing the hub seal because it's leaking from the rear of the hub which I'll show you. So as you can see this is a dual wheel four transit. So do like and subscribe as I have not seen anyone else put up a video of a dual wheel transit of this year. So the facelift of the early models. So this is the year 2010. Just over there is the leak from the rear hub seal. I've gone ahead and cleaned all of this up. I've degreased everything so that once I pull off the half shaft, it'll be clean and I don't have to spend time cleaning up. So that's just a Little tip I can give you, clean up the area before you start work on anything to do with the rear axle. For removing the half shaft, you want to go ahead and just mark it to the hub. So I like to mark it here as well, just to the wheel, so that it goes back in the same orientation. The vehicle jacked up. We'll go ahead and remove the wheels. So if you're not sure how to jack up these folds, I'll just quickly put up a couple of photos now from the Ford manual, you know roughly where to put it. We have removed the wheels, now we can see the leak a bit more clearly and the build up over there so now we're going to go ahead and remove the brake caliper using the hex tool so in order to do that we'll have to just free up the brake line Going ahead and removing this brake clip. So now we're going to proceed removing the caliper over here. This uses that six millimeter hex tool. We'll go ahead and remove the two here. It will be tight and have something ready to hang this caliper on. the caliper bolts removed you can go ahead and just pop a screwdriver in here just to push the glide pin back to release the caliper from the caliper bracket so just there and at the bottom so we'll just go ahead and do that now now we'll go ahead and remove the ABS sensor which is just over there. It's just an eight mil bolt. So we'll just go ahead and. So you may have to use some lubricant because these do get rusty in there. And as you can see, they can corrode over time. So spray it down. If you can spray it down the night before, even better. It'll come off easier. You can use a screwdriver and some pliers just to wiggle it and get it up. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of buildup from the leak over here. So. It's good we caught this in time. Now we'll go ahead and just remove the caliper bracket, which was held in by the 18 mil bolts. Now that we've removed the caliper bracket and freed up this whole area, remove the sensor and everything, go ahead and remove the half shop. It's just you need a 13 millimeter 12 point socket. I've gone ahead and loosened all of the bolts. So I'm just removing them now with the tool. Have a container ready because it's going to leak oil. And underneath the half shaft is where the 65 mil nut is. As you can see, someone is 
and use some gasket maker before prior to this so it's So notice how I've marked it, so we can get it back in the same orientation. So you can see someone's been here before and they've damaged the nut. So once the oil drains out, we'll just clean up this whole area and then pull out the 65 mil nut. So as I showed you earlier, this is the damage that the previous workshop have done to the nut, basically. Uh, they probably don't have the right tools, hence why they've done this. The pads and the rotors on the rear axle were changed about six, seven months ago. And to change, in order to change the rotors and the pads, it's the same process what I'm showing you now. So they had to have taken this nut off. So they probably reused the old one and damaged it as well. So a bit of a shocking discovery. But anyway, we've got new parts. So we're going to be installing new parts now. So now that we remove the hub, we'll go ahead and remove the outer bearing. You can check the bearing for any pit marks and wear and tear and stuff. Then this is the spacer that goes in between. So that goes on the stub, stub axle. And then over here, turn it around. This is the seal that's leaking over here. So this is where the buildup of oil is in. So there's an internal seal, so we'll have to go ahead and remove all this. So now that we've got the rotor removed, uh, this one was caught just in time because this vehicle has been sitting for about six months. Six months prior is when the other workshop had replaced the pads and rotors. And so after this vehicle was sitting for a little while, we noticed that there's a, there was a little bit of buildup around the hub here. In your case, if you are just replacing the seals, more than likely, if you don't, if you haven't caught this in time, you'll have to replace the pads and rotors because once it gets contaminated with oil, it's a safety concern, so I would highly recommend you replace the pads and rotors with new ones. Uh, but in this case, like I said, the previous workshop has probably damaged the seal when it was replaced about six months ago with new pads and rotors. So this was caught just in time because the other side is fine. It was just this side that's leaking. So we'll go ahead and replace the seal and the nut with all genuine new parts. So we'll go ahead and clean up all this area, it's fairly self-explanatory, make everything clean, clean the threads, clean everything around here and then we'll go ahead and install the new parts. We're just tapping the seal out very carefully without touching the bearing, as you can see it's coming out. We'll just go ahead and evenly do it. So what I'm doing is I'm moving the bearing in here. Now, like I said, this is a dual wheel, so that's why the hub sits a lot further out. It's a lot more difficult. So with this, I'm just going in there, and I'm just gently tapping it. You can try and use a seal remover tool as well, but you try and see which what works for you. So that's just removed there. So that's how the bearing sits in there with the race. So that's the inner race. This is the, the outer bearing. So we'll go ahead and check this, clean it up, and then we'll regrease it. Just for reference, if anyone needs the part numbers. So that's a part number for reference in case anyone needs it.
So now we're just going ahead and greasing the berries. So remember with the bearings, you have to force it in, which is what I'm doing here. So see how it's coming out the other way. You always want to force the bearings. So put it in your palm and then just force it in. So it comes out the other side. Now that I've gone ahead and greased the bearing and installed the inner bearing, I'm going to go ahead and install the brand new genuine seal. So as you can see, there's a, it's a special sealant that Ford have from factory, so you have to install these dry. And they also grease the inner seal as well from factory. So you don't need to do anything in that respect, you just need to tap it in. And then this seal will push out, like as you can see in the organ, and it seals on the lip over here. So we'll just go ahead and install this. So this is why I said earlier, make sure to clean up your surfaces, clean up everything around the whole half assembly. Now that we've installed the seal, just make sure it's pressed in fully, so it's pressed into the uh, machine surface. Now we'll go ahead and install it. I've greased the inner bearing, and once I install it, then I'll put the outer bearing in, which you'll see. We just installed the outer bearing, pushed it in. It's similar to installing a trailer bearing if you've ever done it. So now we go ahead and install the new nut, which has already got Loctite installed from factory. So we'll just go ahead and secure this in, and this has to be talked to 425 Newton meters. Now we've got the torque crank set up to 425 newtons. That's a lot of torque, so we'll go ahead and torque that nut down. You watch to the end if you want to see all the specs. So as you can see, because this is a wide body motorhome, there were two people needed because of the extension. We had to hold it here, but you heard it. So now it's fully torqued to 425 newton meters. So we'll go ahead and install the new seal and reinstall the half shaft. So this is the new gasket. So I've gone ahead and cleaned both surfaces, as I mentioned earlier. So don't forget to put the gasket on, because it won't clear the half shaft. Now we'll go ahead and install it. Very cool. I've gone ahead and used some Loctite 243. And I'll just put this one bolt in and then I'll do the same for all the other bolts. I'll just lock that in and they're topped to 134 Newton meters. So this is where we have to realign the mark. So try and realign the, the mark we made earlier. in a star pattern as you would do with your um, wheel so note that I'm just doing it up just finger tight 
and then I'll top it down. Just trying to finger tight. Um, we'll go ahead and reinstall all the brake caliper and the bracket and everything so then we can hold this down with pressure and then torque everything down here. We can even put the wheels back down and then drop the whole vehicle and then torque everything down. So now that we've gone ahead and installed the bracket, this is torqued down to 186 Newton meters. So I'll just show you that again. So the caliper bracket, both the bolts. This is a 460 series vehicle. So this is torqued down to 186 Newton meters. Like I said, if you don't have a 460 transit, you will have to just go to the end of the video and then refer back to the specs on there. This one has also got the airbag, so if you want to see that, um, go to my channel and you'll see this motorhome with the airbags and how that's set up. So now I've just installed the inner pad and I'm just installing the outer pad. I've greased the ears wherever it touches. If you need to see all that, you can watch my other videos. Just lock that in there and you have to hold it in place because this caliper is upside down. Or rather facing down against gravity. Slot that in there. Because this caliper and the brake system was serviced just about six months ago, I don't need to worry about it. But if you are doing this job, I would highly recommend you check your glide pins and your brake system. Caliper bolts are top to 34 Newton meters because this is a 460 vehicle. So I've got that set on my torque so I'm just going to go ahead and talk about the bolts. So the caliper glide bolts to 34 Newton meters. So that's top to 34 Newton meters. Like I said, if you need the specs, just refer to the end of the video. That's it. So now we can go ahead and talk this down to 134 Newtons. So we're going ahead and pull the handbrake off. And now we can talk it down in a star pattern. So as you can see now, this is all spotless and clean. So we'll go ahead and reinstall everything and monitor it. So we're talking the wheels down to 200 Newton meters, which is for nearly all the transit, but steel wheels, they're 200. And don't forget, once you've done the job, to check your differential. So as you can see, I've just opened that. A um, little bit of oil should come out of here. So we'll just go ahead and top that up with the recommended oil, which you should see now. Slides begin with the brake caliper removal. And this is some important notes on the brake pads. So just follow through, it's got all the torque specs and the exact forward procedure. These are the tools that you will require if needed. The pullers and the seal installer that I was describing and talking about earlier on in the video. And if you are going to change a rotor, this is what you do. You have to remove the bolts and then pull out the ABS ring and just swap it over to the new rotors and install new pads. So the next set of slides will be part of the hub assembly and how to replace the seal and install the bearings in case your bearings are pitted and in case you need to replace your bearings you can follow it through with the slides going forward now.